First gram of van stuff is up. Someone call x-ray. So you're gonna feel poked, don't move. What happened, big guy? I can't move my jaw. So far, he's OK. It's our first Halloween-related injury tonight. There's a doctor on 39 for you. Is anything hurting right now, Tessa? This, this is one of the wilder things you're going to see. Yeah. Don't wake up for this. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Las Vegas is notorious as the nation's pleasure capital. Most people think Las Vegas, they see the strip. When you meet people across the country and tell them you're from Las Vegas, they think you live in a hotel and that everybody is a showgirl. But what few people know is that it's also been voted one of the most livable cities in America. With a booming economy and low taxes, Vegas is a great place to raise a family. It boasts the fifth largest school district in the country. And when the school bell rings, children turn the streets of Las Vegas into their playground. <laughs> On Halloween, fun and laughter often overflow. <laughs> Sometimes, trick or treat turns into trauma. That's when the staff in the pediatric emergency room at University Medical Center rise to the occasion. Inside these halls, it's no holiday as the doctors treat a steady volume of patients. Pediatric emergency department. So I'm still worried about something going on in his tummy. I'm Dr. Larry Satkoviak. I'm the director of the pediatric emergency department here at University Medical Center in Las Vegas. You, you gotta worry if she bled in her head. Here at UMC, we'll see about 30,000 patient visits a year. Ativate or, or Valium, either one, what do we got handy? That puts us probably in the top 25% of freestanding pediatric emergency departments. Give him a second bolus. We're also the level one trauma center for Southern Nevada, Three. part of Arizona, Utah, and California. So we have a large encatchment area. Let's see if we can get you out of this, okay? So we do see quite a bit of trauma. What's the mechanism of injury? A patient approximately 35 minutes ago, mother found uh, substance on the side of, uh, of her mouth. A mother found her daughter with something in her mouth that was not Halloween candy. <laughs> Emerald King swallowed a handful of her father's blood pressure pills. The dosage could be deadly. 16 months old, no history, no meds, no allergies. We tried one stick in her right AC, uh, she pulled away. They had a bottle of clonopin, but not sure how many she took because the trips was only for 270. There's about 300 in the bottle. And that's too much? Oh, I'm sorry. or clonidine? Clonidine, I'm sorry. Well, we're worried about an ingestion right now because that's the history, and so we're trying to look for those signs. She would be very sleepy. Watch her vital signs, which appear to be normal right now. I'm Dr. Brandi Kashup, a third-year pediatric resident at UMC Hospital. Hi. Hi. I'm, Dr. I'm from LA area. Grew up in Long Beach. Are you okay? Are you cold? And then went to college in LA. You want to tell me what happened? I love holding babies. <laughs> the thing that attracted me to Las Vegas and UMC was the fact that you have a very diverse patient population. Right now, she looks very comfortable. It's a county hospital, so you see you see everything. Go take care of the rest of the patients. I've seen things that I've only read about in books, not just once, just twice, but numerous times. I'll see you later, OK? It makes me a, a better physician. One-week-old Dayton Robeson is running an unusually high fever. Hi. I'm Dr. Kashif. Why did you bring him today? turns really red and kind of grunts and stops breathing and 
Did he just does he actually that? stop breathing? He just like holds his breath, grunting, you know, like for a few seconds. And okay. Has he ever turned turned blue? No. Okay. And uh, do you have any other children? Yeah, he's number five. Okay. <laughs> you have four others. Well, I'm gonna take a look at him. Oh, did I scare you? Gonna be mad at me, I know. Oh, that's the binky. Before I get you all mad, huh? There we go. The airway lies more anterior in a baby. Uh, the airway is much smaller. It's a lot harder to identify the landmarks. Okay. Ready? Yeah, ready. Okay. Sick children require a lot of special equipment, a lot of special sizes of equipment as well, and different medications. Here you go. Yes, she is really tiny. But you have to remember, pediatrics is from age birth to age 18. And that's a wide range of sizes. Boy, she's small. And listen for me, please. Eight at the lips. She's good. Good. With the tube in place, Amanda is finally stable. Beautiful breath sounds after that. She's sent to the ICU. Michelle, what do we do with the rest of the vet? Dr. Brandy Kashup visits one week old baby Dayton, who was tested for spinal meningitis. We're going to go check on uh, our baby from yesterday, who had the sepsis workup, who had the spinal tap, blood cultures, and the urine cultures. We'll see how he's doing. Pediatrics is the most amazing field. I was trying to decide between surgery and pediatrics, and they're sort of the same. What's the Because in both you fix things. You smiling? Are you feeling better today? Are you feeling better today? He looks really good. Dayton looks wonderful, and fortunately all the test results so far have been negative. See you tomorrow, Dayton. So we'll just keep watching him and we'll keep getting his antibiotics until we have the final results. The potential is still there that she could end up on a breathing machine. That's why she's here. But the way she's looking right now, it doesn't appear that she's going to so anytime soon. Slightly. Asthma patient Samantha Miles is slowly recovering in the ICU. We gave Samantha all the medicines, all the albuterol, the breathing treatments. We opened her up. Uh, she got a lot better on the way to the ICU. And now she is in here right now. And she is doing a lot better from where she was upstairs. Her lungs have opened up quite nicely. We're continuing the different medications on her. Things are still looking good. Let's go take a look at Amanda here. So Amanda's now here in the ICU. Uh, she's in an Ohio warmer, which allows us to take care of uh, smaller babies a little easier, keep them wide open. This is a heater, actually, to keep her body heat up. She's on the ventilator. So she's doing very well, but she's going to have a lot rockier course than the other uh, patient. Once we put a child on a ventilator, it uh, means things are going to be a little bit more difficult, especially with the RSV. So she will probably have a little bit longer course in the ICU. And it's really going to be kind of a 24, 48 hour thing to reassess her and see how things are going at that point. Halloween in Las Vegas, when the witches and warlocks emerge and the ghosts and goblins party. A child who may have appendicitis doubled over in pain will still find the energy to put on their costume and go out and get their candy before they come in. But it's not just the children having fun. <laughs> UMC's staff is also under the spell of Halloween madness. I want to suck your blood. Strider. When did this start? Two-year-old Rosario Zapata was at a Halloween party when she started coughing violently and couldn't breathe. Yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah. And when did it get worse? Today. Today? Anybody else at home been sick? Mm. Her cousin. Uh, what, what do we have? 
She looks like she probably has croup, which is a viral infection of her voice box, basically. She's going to need a racemic treatment. Okay, big stick. Okay. She's gotten a dose of steroid, which is decrease that inflammation. But she's also getting some racemic epinephrine, which should help also kind of decrease the inflammation, open up her airway some so she can breathe better. Once she's done breathing that, um, we'll observe her. They'll probably just blow some cool mist by her face. I'm not certain what she was supposed to be. <laughs> Looks kind of like a raccoon. <laughs> you know, when you go in to see a, a toddler, typically they aren't going to want to have anything to do with you. <laughs> Toddlers are a challenge, but they're kind of cool, too. She sounds good as long as we aren't agitating her. <laughs> Once Rosario is able to breathe better, she can go enjoy the rest of her Halloween. There you go. That's all. Before a night of trick-or-treating, a young boy hurt his arm while playing in the yard. Miss Jake? Hi, Dr. Sayakoviak. How are you? Hi, Jake. How'd you hurt your break your arm? I tumbled down an inflatable um slide. Well, what he has done, he's dislocated his elbow. And it's easiest to see it on this x-ray right here. The, the concern is that this piece of bone right here does not belong there. That's a free-floating piece. At his age, his elbow is in about, normally in about four, four or five different pieces with the growth plates in there. That's probably the medial epicondyle. Normally what happens, if you get the bone put back into place, everything falls back into place. It's not that, that common that children dislocate their elbow. They usually break it. Right. So, But it does happen if you catch it just right. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring him in the other room, give him some medicine called Brevitol, which kind of knocks him out for about four or five minutes, pop the... Uh, elbow back into place where it needs to be in re-x-ray. So hang on, we'll transfer you over here. What are you doing right now? Oh, I'm waiting for the hep lockish to be placed. It is. We do a little privacy here. Going trick-or-treating? Yeah? Where are you going dressed as? Psycho. A psycho? Well, you be a psycho with a broken arm and a cast on now, I guess. You have to be a big kid yourself. You have to be able to go in and get to the child's level. Uh, this isn't looking good for football playoffs, so. You got children from the age of birth up to the age of 16. You can't use the same personality on all of them. One of you can sit, because I don't want you both to pass out. If one of you passes out, it's okay. But if you both go, then we're in deep trouble. All right, you're going to be going to sleep in about 15 seconds, okay? How you feeling? Hmm? He's not there anymore. Feeling sleepy? Just grab him, that's it. Smooth and gone. Because he's got a lot of swelling on that, so we put a splint on, which will immobilize it just as well as a cast. It's all right. Yeah, right, buddy. It's all right. We're all done, big guy. All right. Now over the X-rays, we'll see where everything's lined up at this point. See if that fracture still exists in there. Hey, Jake, how you doing? Open your eyes. We're all done. Open your eyes, champ. We're done. You remember what happened? Whoa, hey, that's a trip, man. You know, you're not going anywhere yet. <laughs> All right, let's get our x rays here. Not a thing on me. He looks like he is lined up completely back. Mr. Jake, you are all set to go. All right, if there's any problems or questions, let us know. Jake, stay out of trouble, have fun trick or treating, okay? Okay. All right, take care, guys. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Kashub checks on one-week-old baby Dayton, whose father has just arrived. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? But the mom did the right thing, bringing the child to the hospital. Looks like he's doing really well. I'm doing better for the fever down. Thankfully, all the tests were negative with Dayton. The fluid all came back and looked good, so that's a good thing. The fever and stuff, I mean, you wouldn't even know it was sick. Right. It's nice to see a father involved in, in his child's life. We don't always see that. It's the best part of my job. <laughs> There's many sleepless nights when you have a child who's sick. It lives with you, it stays with you, it haunts you. You think about it. You go through the, the scenario over and over in your mind. You need to make sure that you did the right thing. The test for spinal meningitis is negative. Baby Dayton can go home. Bye, guys. 
Bye, sweetie. Look at this. He's okay. You take care. Bye. Housing in the schoolyard left one boy hurt. Brandy, what did we just get? Okay. This one here, because they have to get in here. What he states he did have loss of consciousness. DeMarlo Laval fell backwards after a head on collision with a friend. He hit the back of his head, and he does have a hematoma back there, but it's not open. He was hit on the playground. Can you tell me what your name is? Anytime we get notified that a child has had a possible head injury. I'm Dr. Keshap. How old are you? Obviously, we're on uh, alert and we're at full attention. I'm take a listen to you, OK? Are you sure that? That's it. Thank you. DeMarlo's not as responsive as he should be. What happened when you fell? He really shouldn't be acting the way he is. Do you know where you are? That's extremely concerning. We're probably going to take some pictures, OK? Can you bend your knee? Obviously, the biggest concern is that he has a bleed um, in his head. That would be the most dangerous thing and the thing we're most concerned about. What's up, big guy? My nut hurts on the back of the work. On the back here? Yeah, that's why we need to get the pictures first, OK? Yeah. All right, we got to make sure that your neck's OK. That's our work biggest concern right now, okay? We don't want your neck to be injured. So we'll get the x-rays really fast so we can get you off of there, okay? Yeah. All right. All right, let's get this x-rays done. Yeah. Cat scan ready for him yet? He needs to get downstairs. Um, I think they're ready for him. Most of these kids will end up not having any prime kind of problem, but we just want to make sure, especially if he has pinpoint tenderness. So we'll see the x-rays and then we'll take a look at them. Okay. All right. Hi, my name's April. I'm going to be taking x-rays of your neck, okay? Dr. Scobie, I got the x-rays. Okay, take a look. All right, well, when we look at the lateral, we just want to make sure all the lines lined up. So we look down the anterior line, it's good. Posterior line, down those lines, it looks fine. So those x-rays look all right, so we can go and try to clear a C-spine and get them out. Okay, sounds good. DeMarlo's x-rays show no damage, but he's not out of danger yet. Your x-rays look good. Let's see if we can get you out of this, okay? The C-spine collars that we place on children are extremely uncomfortable. That's okay? Yes. Okay, just on the sides a little bit? They're made that way because you're not supposed to be able to move your head. Think you can do that? But it's necessary until we can ensure that he doesn't have a spinal injury. You doing okay? He goes to CAT scan, where doctors will check for a brain bleed. Are you cold? You keep shivering. Are you cold? Mm. Are you scared? Scared. Scared? Okay. It's okay. There's nothing to be scared of. We have to go to the lip. This is going to be a lot of fun. You're going to witness. An 11 year old who does not want to get her lips sewn up. Do, 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 do. Most 11 year olds are lay very still and be very cooperative. I have a feeling this young lady is uh, going to be more of a challenge. Kylie Dowling cut her lip while she was playing with her brother. Her brother hit her with a soda can when he was swinging around at the Halloween party. Well, what we got to do, look, I'm not doing anything. What we're going to do is we got to put the medicine up in here. And once we put the medicine in, you won't feel anything. Then we can put the stitches in, you won't feel the stitches, OK? You got to be real brave for me, all right? Just relax, OK? We do this all the time. OK. You just have to oh, relax. got to relax, sweetie. It's just a little relax. pinch. A little tiny pinch. Just like that. Snap. Job, Look at that. You're doing great. Oh, oh, you're right. You're right. It stinks. And guess what? That's all that will hurt. That's it. Now, you're gonna, now oh, nothing else will feel. Real numb. Ew. Well, keep, it, keep her mouth closed. Okay, now yeah, now you gotta relax a little bit. Man, you're doing so good. Mm -hmm. Last one here. Oh, you know what? I could put a couple extra ones up in your forehead. You could be Frankenstein. Ah, oh. uh, just tease. Here we go. She put a little ointment on there. Oh, she actually did very well. I was very surprised. So, 
Um, you know, she calmed down once we got it. She understood everything and uh, kind of held tight. And it looks good. Have you ever had an x-ray like this before? What you're gonna do is just lie here and you just lay really still, okay? I decided to go into medicine because when I was in college, I started reflecting on my life and looking at what was important to me, what made me the happiest. A CT scan is a more detailed x-ray, which uses slices to help us look in the brain. I don't see anything obvious on the film. He's definitely a lucky boy. Okay, hold real still, we're almost done. I took an EMT course, which is emergency medical technician course when I was in college. It didn't hurt, did it? And, and I sort of got a flavor for medicine, and it definitely was what I liked. You're going to be OK. Well, it's good news that his CAT scan looks OK. But he's still not out of the woods. We need to make sure he's clinically stable before we clear him. CT, the head was done. That was rated by the radiologist as negative. On re-exam, he's awake and alert, oriented times three with a glass glaucoma scale of 15. He has no C-spine tendernesses. You let us know if you have any pain, OK? Something starts hurting. Tomorrow is going to be discharged with his mom. We've educated her on the signs to look for, and she feels comfortable with that. He's a normal kid, plays around, too rough. <laughs> Other than that, he's OK. DeMarlo's a lucky boy. All he got was a bump on the head. A deaf child was run over by a car. Dr. Kashup is called to the trauma unit. Pete versus Otto, full code. Five-year-old Jose was playing in the street and couldn't hear the car approaching. Nice deep breath. Yeah. Abdomen soft. Whenever you come to a trauma, you just have to stay focused. Five or six of Fenergan IV. Five or six come. And allow one person to direct the resuscitation. It's 93%. And follow along so that you're contributing to the resuscitation instead of detracting and confusing people. The fact that Jose is deaf definitely complicates the situation because we have no way of communicating with him. I'm trying to keep the patient um, calm the best way I know how, which is just by stroking his hair and his hand when I can. That's the only way I know how to communicate with this child to let him know that we're trying to help him. We can't comfort him and explain what we're doing. All he knows is that people are poking at him. He doesn't understand why, and he knows he's in pain, so. Let's have a bigger blood pressure cuff. Getting ready to put a, what they call an OG tube in. He's the same age as my brother. He is the same build as my little brother. This could be my little brother. His heart rate's a little fast. That's probably because he's nervous. He's gone through a lot of pain. Whenever you have an emotional response in medicine, you really have to distance yourself from it so it won't affect you. Get yeah. some white tape. X-ray? Yeah. He's going to have um, his head and then his belly. OK, is CT ready? Yeah, they're ready right now. OK, let's take him. OK. Two-year-old Nagin has a high fever. Has she peed this morning? Has she urinated? Has she gone pee? Uh, yes. She has? Yes. How many times, do you know? No, two, two, two times. times? Two times. OK. Nagin may have a urinary tract infection. You know what? You're going to need to slip her clothes off. I, I know she doesn't want to, but... Leave her shoes on if she wants those on, but at least her shirt. And... <gasps> Look at those toes. There are days when it's just but a huge volume of patients. How many layers of clothes do you have on? For the most part, I mean, I hit the floor running at 11, and at 10 o'clock at night, I leave. 
she open her mouth for me? Typically, you don't really stop thinking, moving, making decisions for 11 hours. Um, how do you come with me, okay? Well, I'm gonna get a translator for them. <laughs> what language do you speak? Persian. Persian, okay. I need a Persian translator on the phone. I'm the nurse practitioner. I'm the one that does what the doctors do. And um, I'm wondering a couple of things. Has she has she urinated today? And um, does it hurt when she pees? Does he think that he can get her to um, urinate in a cup? It'll take about an hour after the urine is sent for us to have results back. So they'll be waiting in the room while we wait for the results. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Give him a urine cup. I'm gonna snap that back on. On three, one, two, three. Jose is now in CAT scan to rule out any internal injuries. At times it's difficult to detach yourself from the emotions involved in pediatrics. Okay. He opens his eyes to painful stimulation but it's something that you learn as you go through your residency. The CT looks good right now, but you know, we'll need to review it more carefully, but nothing big. This is an area where you don't have any, you can't evaluate, so just check the pulse. It's difficult because you are dealing with innocent children, and sometimes the things that they suffer are a result of mistakes that other people have made, and it's frustrating. Jose will be observed in the ICU for the next 24 hours. Baby Amanda is recovering well from the RSV virus. What well, looks like Amanda is out of the PEDS ICU. She has been transferred out to the pediatric floor, which is a pretty good sign. That's usually a step down. It means she's gotten off the ventilator and she's getting prepared to go home. Here is Amanda right She is asleep. She is looking great. She is a pretty little girl. The virus can uh, cause little babies to stop breathing, and that's always a concern. But at this point, I think uh, Amanda is ready to go home. Asthma patient Samantha Miles is also doing better. She is able to lead UMC. Samantha's done well. She's responded exceptionally well to the therapy here in the hospital. She's ready to go home. All right, let's there go. You go. Asthma is a chronic disease. This can certainly happen again. Is that him? Okay, is that the red car there? Yep. Okay, great. Well, Have you come with me, okay? Bring her with. Come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two year old Nagin's urine test results are in. Is he a translator again? <laughs> I need that Persian translator again. Please. So her urine came back and she does have infection in her urine. It's very common for little girls to have fever and nausea and vomiting with urinary tract infections. Okay. If she takes bubble baths at all, I would recommend that she not do that. I think a big piece of it is educating the parents so they know what to do in the future when their child's sick. Does he have any questions for me? Or they know when to bring the child back if they're not getting better. This is the uh, medicine, okay? Okay. For the pharmacy. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Nikki. I think if you try, the patients that don't speak your language still understand you do care. Thank you. Good night, kiddos. This is probably my dream job, actually. I'll see you again on Friday. This is what I know how to do when I like it. You work in what?